I've been using the Sony a7S III now as my main shooter for everything, and yes, that does include photos, don't hate, for probably about the last year now, and I honestly cannot speak highly enough about this camera, it's an absolute beast. There is a couple of flaws with it, but they're nothing major, they're literally just battery life. This thing eats through batteries, like I eat through biscuits. And then the second thing, memory. Video files on this are absolutely vile, they are massive. They take up so much storage, so it just goes through memory so much. So buying extra external storage for storing stuff and then extra SD cards to be able to film enough in your camera, it all adds up, obviously resulting in you spending more money. But other than those two things, I literally cannot fault this camera at all. But one thing that I quite often get asked is, basically, is the A7S III worth the money when you can find something for half the price or even less than half the price like the Sony a7 III which is what I'm filming this on now and the a7 III as you probably already know is an absolute beast of a camera really popular really great camera my a7 III literally was my main shooter for a good couple of years before I got the a7s III and it served me really well I shot countless projects on it and it never failed me but today what we're going to do is we're going to see if the a7 III can keep up with the a7s III in both photo and video scenarios to see whether the A7S III is actually worth that hefty nearly £4,000 price tag. But now, I think it's time that we get out into the real world and actually do some tests and compare these cameras and see what the difference is, if there's a difference at all. So, what better place to do this than in the Alps? I've actually not got very long to film this because I was up here working, I've literally going home today. So I flew to the Alps the other day to do some work and now I've got like no work left to do apart from making this video. So I thought why not make this video on the last day here because I've got like almost a full day here but I've got to drive to Geneva later to take the car back to the car rental place. So I've got until then to get this entire video filmed. Probably gonna end up finishing a video in the office to be honest and just doing like a B-roll section here. And then also gonna do like photo comparisons to really show you how good the A7S III is actually at photos compared to the A7 III, whether it can keep up with it in terms of photos and whether the A7 III can keep up with the A7S III with video. So I'm gonna try and get it done. Can't promise anything, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, yeah, gonna crack on, gonna try and get it done. I mean, do I even need to say anything? Does a single word need to come out of my mouth? I honestly didn't realize how big of a difference there was between the a7 III and the a7S III when it comes to video, especially in 120. I know there's the whole 1080p 4K difference, but <laughs> the a7 III footage legit looks like it's been filmed on a potato next to the a7S III. So I think that in a whole puts into perspective the difference in terms of quality between the a7 III and the a7S III. The a7S III is absolutely ridiculous. Don't for a second think that I'm saying the a7 III is a bad camera just because of what I just said about the video quality because it really isn't a bad camera. Like I said earlier in this video, I used the a7 III for a couple of years as my main camera and then I was able to upgrade to the a7S III because business went well basically. So the a7 III is still very usable, it still shoots 4K, obviously not 4K 120, but you can upscale it and it does look good, just nowhere close to as good as the a7S III. But if you're only making videos for social media, then that upscaled 1080p going into 4K really isn't gonna make too much difference because of the compression that you get from putting things online anyway. Obviously the a7S III still has more advantages over the a7 III when it comes to video stuff being the low light king, you've got dual native ISO, so you can shoot at 640, which is the base, 
and then you've got your second native ISO, which is 12,800. So you go all the way through your ISO. When you get to like five, 6,000, it starts going grainy and messy. But then as soon as you hit 12,800, the footage cleans up exactly the same as it would if you were shooting at 640. Whereas on the A7 III, you don't have that. You just have the one base ISO, which is 800. And then if you start pushing it too far, then it's gonna get noisy and it's not as good in low light. But then there's not actually many cameras that are as good as the A7S III in low light. So don't let that put you off the A7 III either. When it comes to color grading, obviously the A7S III again is gonna beat the A7 III because you're able to use that 10-bit 422 color codec as opposed to the A7 III, which shoots an 8-bit 420. So that basically just means that you can do more with the colors and push them and change them a lot easier, more towards you, what you'd be able to do if you were shooting in RAW. And then if you wanna step that up to a whole new level with the A7S III, you can use something like the Atom Watson Ninja 5, which is an external recorder, which means that it records externally from the camera straight into here, you can get SSDs that plug into here, and then you can shoot in ProRes RAW, which means that you essentially are shooting in RAW, so you've again got that extra mile that you can go with what you're doing with the footage, dynamic range, color changing, and all that kind of crap. The IBIS in the A7S III is amazing, like it's so stable, like some of the footage that I've shot on my A7S III handheld is more stable than the stuff that I've shot on the A7 III when I'm on a gimbal. The last shot you saw in that B-roll sequence that I put in a minute ago, that was handheld, no stabilization. Yeah, it was slowed down because it was shot in 120, but there was it was so stable just purely because of how good the IBIS is inside this camera. And the A7 III, the IBIS is good. It is very good, it's a lot better than a lot of the competitors at that price range, but you still can see some jitters in the footage and you do need to use a warp stabilizer or whatever stabilizer you have in your editing software to make that footage look a lot more pleasing, basically. As you can see in this clip of me walking across the bridge, the A7S III footage is on the left and the A7 III footage is on the right, and it was handheld, and you can see that the A7S III, there's virtually zero movement at all, and the A7 III footage, there is a few wobbles. So that basically does show you the difference between the IBIS in the two cameras, even just in a static shot. In terms of autofocus, again, the A7S III absolutely smashes it out of the park. One of my favorite things with the autofocus on the A7S III is in the situation like this YouTube video, I can literally set the focus area to wide, sit in front of the camera, and it will just not go off me because of how good the face detect autofocus is. Whereas on the A7S III, when I was filming YouTube videos on that, was a little bit temperamental so I couldn't put it on wide I'd have to put it on center and basically just move the little box so it was on my face or around my eyes and then when it comes to filming b-roll and stuff then the autofocus on the a7s3 again is amazing because of the touch screen you can just tap anywhere on the screen and wherever you tap it will track and it will pretty much stay exactly on the thing that you tap to focus on the entire time you're recording so say I'm filming a person I'll tap on their head and then I'll follow them. They might go behind a tree and then as soon as they come back past that tree, snap straight back onto them, no issues at all. There's very little breathing with the autofocus as well, which is something that we couldn't do with the A7 III because of the tracking wasn't as good and there wasn't, there is touch features, but nowhere close to what it is on the A7S III. And for stuff like in these videos, again, if I wanted to hold something up to the screen, say my phone, it will focus straight onto the phone and then as soon as I move it, it's straight back on me, like in an instant. The A7 III does do that, but it's just a little bit slower. In order to keep this video at a reasonable length so it's not too long, I'm not gonna deep dive into all the specs, but I've ran through what I think are like the main big differences between these two cameras already. So leave it there and we're gonna move on to photos. Now this is where people think that things are gonna change drastically and the A7 III is gonna absolutely whoop the A7S III's ass. Because the A7S III only has a 12 megapixel sensor and the A7 III, wherever I've put it, here, this has a 24 megapixel sensor. So people automatically think that the a7 III is gonna be better than the a7S III purely because of the megapixel count. But they're wrong, very, very wrong. <laughs> the a7S III I actually prefer for photos over the a7 III. And I think the reason for that, the photos just look nicer in general because I think the a7S III has a better sensor than the a7 III. Therefore the photos turn out nicer and crisper and sharper. Obviously when you get to crop in, the a7 III is gonna be better because you've got more megapixels if you're gonna crop in loads. But the A7S III, for me, I generally post on social media. I'm not blowing up billboards, so the A7S III's 12 megapixels doesn't make a difference to me at all. And a lot of my mates have been very surprised when I show them photos I've taken on the A7S III compared to the A7 III. 
because the photos on there are so good. So what I am going to do is I'm going to pop up a load of photos on the screen now. A7S3 one side, A7 III the other side. I'm not going to say which one it is for the first couple of seconds and I'll pop up which one was which on the screen. See how many you can get right. because you should be. <laughs> Everyone else that I've showed photos to from both of these cameras has been very surprised at how good the a7S 3 is. They were always like, wow, I didn't actually expect it to be that good. Unreal camera for photos. And I purely think because of how good the sensor is in the a7S 3 that is what makes it better in my opinion than the a7 III for photos. So just imagine if the a7S 3 had those extra megapixels so it didn't make any difference at all when you crop in really really tight on a photo but at the end of the day Lightroom's now got his enhanced feature so you can double the resolution anyway which essentially can take the a7s3 up to 24 megapixels so there's no difference between the two cameras as it is if you do that with one click you can make this double the resolution and one big thing when it comes to the a7s3 for photos which I much prefer over the a7 III is the screen. a7 III still has this crap that Sony was so insistent on keeping for so many years and the a7S 3 has a flip screen so for low shots you can just put it down flip the screen out be like there we go got the shot nice and easy rather than having to like, lie down with the camera and piss around with it like that to try and get a shot and get a crick in your neck which isn't ideal but other than the flip screen and the megapixel count the specs on these two cameras in terms of photos is pretty much identical the a7S 3 I think is better than the a7 III for photos hands down and then obviously hands down even further the a7s3 is better than the a7 III for video so that kind of concludes the video is the a7s3 worth 3800 pound fuck yeah <laughs> i'd spend it every single day if i could because it is such an incredible camera and that's going to wrap it up for this video leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this comparison do you think the a7s3 is worth the money as much as i think it is also, let me know if you want to see like a proper deep breakdown in the specs of these two cameras and an actual sort of, in quotes, scientific comparison where I break everything down because that would be long. So I'm not going to put the effort into that if no one wants to see it because that will take a long time to make. If you like this video, make sure you leave me a like. Make sure you subscribe if you did enjoy it and you want to see more shit like this. And if you do subscribe, I'll see you next week. See you later.